Hi everybody, so today I'm going to be talking about vaginal cytosis. And basically I'm going to look at vaginal cytosis being done by two types of white blood cells, which are going to be the neutrophils, and it's also going to be the macrophages. In this video, I'm also going to talk about the oxidative, or also known as respiratory, burst, and um, nets too. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking with, the, we're going to start off with the neutrophils. So I'm going to draw this like this. All right, this is my neutrophil. Okay, that's going to be the neutrophil right here. So let me write, this is a neutrophil. Okay, and a neutrophil basically has, it's multinucleated, okay? So my neutrophil is multinucleated, which means it has more than one nucleus. In fact, I'm going to move this over just a little bit, and we're going to draw this a little bit smaller. And so... Here's what happens is when a bacteria comes in the body, right? So here's my bacteria. And when it comes into the body, bacteria and basically all cells have markers on them. In this case, we're going to call these antigens. So what I mean by an antigen is these can be proteins or sugars or sugar proteins called glycoproteins that the body recognizes doesn't belong in the cell. So what it does is it forms an immune response to it. What my neutrophil is going to do is this, is you have little things called microtubules inside the cell, and what they're going to do is they're gonna push this cell membrane out to make like arms. We call these pseudopods. So here comes my pseudopod like this. All right, there's my pseudopod there. And then we got a pseudopod over here. Now, these black lines, these black lines all represent the cell membrane. The black lines represent the cell membrane. So when it pushes the cell membrane out, you gotta realize this is still all cell membrane in here. So to give you an idea what this would be like, imagine I put, take my arms out like this, and now I'm gonna pull something into my body. But in this case, it's actually going to enter into the cell. So my arms would be the pseudopods, right? So it pulls this into the body. So let's draw it now on the inside. Okay, and here it is. And when it does this, remember, this is still surrounded by the cell membrane. And we're gonna call this a phagosome, okay? So it pulls it into the body or into the cell. All right, so here it is inside the cell. Okay, and this is known now as a phagosome. Okay, so it's done phagocytosis and this is a phagosome. Now, inside the body you have, or inside the cell, you basically have some other types of vesicles, which is known as a lysosome. That's my lysosome. Inside of lysosomes, we have something that's called hydrolytic enzymes and these are designed these are proteins that are designed to break down things so what's going to happen now my lysosome is going to bond with my phagosome so this is going to bond with this okay it's going to bond with this when it does that this is now known as a phagolysosome okay when these when this bonds with this it's known as a phagolysosome okay and now what's going to happen is these hydrolytic enzymes are going to enter into the phagosome. Okay? And when it does, what it's going to do is it's going to break down this bacteria. So let's go ahead and break this down. However, I am still going to have my antigens on here. So there's the antigens. Okay? There's the antigens right there. So now, after that's done, what's going to happen is this, my neutrophil, is going to now bond again with the cell membrane, and it's going to release these antigens out of the neutrophil. Okay, this is called exocytosis. 
has exocytosis. So my, my antigens have now been kicked out of the neutrophil. These antigens will now enter into the lymph system. They will go to a lymph node. And in the lymph node, what will happen is my B and T cells will take over and we're gonna eventually start to make antibodies. So if we ever run into this bacteria again, we're prepared to attack it. But let's say that this is not strong enough. For example, Yersinia pestis causes the plague. And Yersinia pestis can survive phagocytosis. So this is not strong enough to kill that. What happens now? Well, let's go back now and take a look, okay? And so now, let's just say my bacteria is now inside here. This is bonded with it. It's released these enzymes, but it has not killed the bacteria. This bacteria is a pretty bad dude, okay? So there's my Yersinia pestis in there. Now, what the body, what the neutrophil will do now is something called oxidative burst. Okay, let's just erase some of this here. It's going to do oxidative burst. So what's gonna happen is, I have something inside of the cell called NADPH. Inside of here, I'm gonna have oxygen. Okay, I have oxygen inside of here. The NADPH is going to become NADP and hydrogen, okay? It's going to release electrons inside this phagosome. What's going to happen now is this oxygen is going to go from being oxygen to what we call a superoxide. It has extra electrons on it now. So it's a superoxide, it's a free radical. Now, this can do one of two different things. The oxygen, when it's a free radical, can attack the bacteria and try to kill it, or some of it will go on to become H2O2 which you know is hydrogen peroxide. That's hydrogen peroxide. You probably have some inside your house, right? The hydrogen peroxide can do two different things. Remember, this is all taking place inside here. The hydrogen peroxide can go and try to kill the bacteria also. It's not as effective as the superoxide. Or some of the hydrogen peroxide is going to break down into, into hydroxide free, uh, uh, free radicals, hydroxide free radicals, or it's going to become, we're going to have chlorine that comes in. It's going to become HClO, which this is known as, as hypochlorite. Okay, it's known as hypochlorite. Eventually it becomes hypochlorite. It starts off as, as hypochlorous acid. It's going to become hypochlorite. You commonly know this as bleach. Okay, and again, this is going to be inside of here. So this would also attack the bacteria to kill it. Now. Here's the bad thing on this, is that when you go to kill this, if you're doing oxidative burst, so just let me write that down. So we're doing oxidative burst. Right? Oops, burst. When you're doing oxidative burst, you're going to destroy the neutrophil. Okay, you're going to destroy the neutrophil. So here's what's gonna happen now. It's like we said, this is a nucleus that's right here, right? And as we know, inside of a nucleus, you have something called DNA. When the neutrophil is dying, it's going to release its DNA out of the neutrophil. So here's my DNA, and now it's been released out of the DNA, right? And on your DNA, you actually have proteins, which are known as histones. So those are my histones right there. And what's gonna happen is now, let's say we have another bacteria here. All right, this is my bacteria. And like we said, we have antigens on there. I think I drew three. There's obviously a lot more than three antigens on a bacteria. So what's gonna happen now is these histones will now bond with these antigens that are on here, right? So it's going to look something like this. Okay, and that will cause 
the DNA to basically wrap around around this, okay? It'll actually wrap around it. I don't want to do it on the top, it would actually be a, engulf the whole thing. This process is known as NETS. So what's going to happen in NETS now is you're going to have either enzymes or you're going to have phagocytes come over and kill any of the bacteria that's in the area. So again, we start off with the phagocytosis and the phagolysosome and hydrolytic enzymes being released to kill the bacteria. If that doesn't work, the neutrophil will do oxidative burst. In oxidative burst, we're going to convert oxygen into superoxide, right? Because my NAD pH has donated an electron, an electron to the oxygen. Okay, or actually two electrons. So we're going to end up with an extra electron on the oxygen. The, the superoxide can either destroy the bacteria or some of it's going to go on to become hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide can also kill the bacteria or it can go on to become hydrox uh, hydroxide free radicals or hydro hypochlorous acid, which is basically bleach. It's going to go through another process, hypochlorite, but it's going to become bleach, which you know bleach, bleach is what we use on our clothes, right? And that then can go and kill the bacteria also. Now that's the neutrophil. So the neutrophil, oh, no, I'm sorry. Then over here, once the neutrophil knows it's dying, it's going to release its DNA. You have histones on the DNA, right? These are histones, but these are proteins. And basically your DNA wraps around it. This is going to bond onto here. And it's basically going to make it so that enzymes will come by and kill it. Or it would be phagocytized by some other type of white blood cell that's on that. Let me just move this over just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? That's going to be called NETS, all right? So that's the neutrophil. Let's take a look at the macrophage. Let me erase this real quick. So now, with a macrophage, I'm not going to draw it as big, and I'm also not going to do the phagocytosis, okay? But let's just say it's already done the same thing that we saw with the neutrophil, where it, had, it made the pseudopods and now it's pulled the bacteria into itself. And here's the bacteria in here. Okay, and, um, okay, so this is my bacteria. And then I have my, remember we're gonna have the membrane going around this, right? Oop, and I gotta put my antigens on there, of course. All right, there's an antigen, there's an antigen, there's an antigen. And then we're gonna do the lysosome thing again, right? Here's my lysosome. And my lysosome has the hydrolytic enzymes in here. And remember, enzymes are proteins. And then it's gonna bond, and like this. And then what's gonna happen is my hydrolytic proteins are going to come in here and it's going to destroy this. So here comes my hydrolytic proteins coming down like this, right, all into here. By the way, this would still be known as a phagosome. This is, is still known as a lysosome. And when they're together, it's still known as a phagolysosome, okay? So now what's going to happen is this. We are going to destroy this, okay? Now, if you remember last time when we were talking about the neutrophil, we said the neutrophil does exocytosis and it kicks those antigens out. It kicks those antigens out. Well, macrophages are a little bit different, okay? And again, this is a macrophage. Macrophages are a little bit different because what macrophages are going to do is it's going to present these. So you have on your, every cell in your body that has a nucleus basically has a receptor on it, okay? And on that receptor, you have an antigen. I don't know if you guys can see that, so let me go with, um, let me go with purple. All okay? right, there's an antigen. This is a self-antigen, okay? This is a self-antigen. So what this self-antigen does is this tells the body your body, I belong here. 
Don't attack me. I belong in the body. Okay? You take this cell and put it in somebody else's body, that's a bad guy. In your body, it's saying, hey, I'm a good guy. Don't attack me. I belong here. Okay? This is known as MHC1, major histocompatibility complex 1. That's the name of that receptor. Okay? So what's going to happen now is this is obviously this should have a nucleus because I said it has MHC1. MHC1 is on every cell that has a nucleus. MHC1 is on every cell that has a nucleus. This is my nucleus. Nuclei are made up of chromosomes. In this case, you have chromosome 6. So what's going to happen is that chromosome 6, we're going to get some reshuffling, and what you're going to do is you are going to make some receptors. Those receptors now are going to come and bond onto these antigens. All right, they're gonna bond onto these antigens. Then what they're going to do is they're gonna take these antigens and they're gonna go up to the cell membrane and they're going to present them on the cell membrane. All right, so we got this and now we have the antigen, okay? Now, why did I mention MHC1? MHC1 is on every cell that has a nucleus. This, on the macrophage, when it's been caught, this is known as MHC2. And then there's the antigen, this is the bacterial antigen in this case, right here. That's my MHC2 with the antigen. Now, the macrophage, whereas we said with the neutrophils, these just got kicked out and then had to go to the lymph node. In this case, what's going to happen is the whole macrophage is gonna enter the lymph system, it's gonna go up to the lymph node, and then at the lymph node, it should meet up with a B cell, which is then gonna become activated, and T cells uh, basically cause it to multiply, and that's for a whole nother video, which I do have on adaptive immunity. All right, so again, the difference between macrophages and neutrophils is if you notice, there's no oxidative burst here. There's also no nets here, okay? We have no nets, we have no oxidative burst. This part's the same as far as the lysosome uh, bonding with it and causing a, a phagolysosome. The difference in how the antigen is, present, is treated is in this case, we have an antigen presenting um, cell, so we, we present the antigen on the cell membrane, okay? Neutrophil just kick those out. And like I said, then no matter what, the antigens end up at the lymph nodes. That's it for phagocytosis, and thank you so much for watching.